Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test, I'm Josh. I'm Tanner. Now Tanner has been a dear friend for us for a long time here. You actually are the owner of something called Tritium Studios. Yes, I am. Yeah, so we, we have uh, all kinds of electronic manufacturing capacities and, and we design sensors and other types of electronics for companies and customers. Um, and then we do all of our own in-house manufacturing too. Amazing. Now along with that, Tanner is also an avid pilot. Now the reason we have Tanner on the show today is because we are kind of going into a new chapter of flight test through our partners with JLC PCB, and that's with circuit board design. Uh, oftentimes you've heard me mention at the very end of the build videos, you know, big shop JLC PCB and how we're combining our love for foam board airplanes, but also trying to bring more electronics in, trying to give you guys the ability to have the learning tools you need. So say you have something like our favorite plane that we're gonna be working on today, which is the Spear, um, you can design your own circuit board to be able to do things like power distribution and things like that. Now, frankly, I know nothing about this. I'm a beginner in this world. I tried to learn, I had a lot of difficulty, but thanks to my friend Tanner here, he's gonna walk us through step-by-step step on how to do something as simple as build a distribution board, but also the tools and the software you're gonna need to make that happen. Yep. So what are we using here? So I use DipTrace for a lot of the work. Um, there is a, a license for DipTrace, but they also have a free version. And what we're, what we're doing today, um, we can use the free version for. Now, whether it's dip trace or another program, kind of what you're gonna be walking us through is pretty much the same. Now the buttons, just like I use CorelDRAW for designing airplanes, other people use Adobe Illustrator, other people use Fusion 360, the, but the principles are pretty much the same, right? That's correct, yeah. So um, you really start out by having an idea of what your, uh, your electrical properties are. You wanna draw your schematic and it needs to make sense. It's like drawing your wires that would connect the parts on it if you were running wires to them. Um, yeah, so, and then after you, you lay out that schematic, you would move on to um, taking those parts over into the physical layout of the circuit board. Gotcha. Now guys, if you ever see like on a manual, oftentimes if you go to the back of the manual, you'll see a schematic, that's pretty much what you're talking about. Yeah. That just gives you an understanding of where the grounds are, where the powers are, where signals are, where different components uh, are touching each other. Is that right? Yep, so each, each uh, pin on every part on your circuit board, on your schematic, will have a little wire that connects it to wherever it's supposed to go. Gotcha. Um, so ultimately you start with that first and that's gonna tell you uh, whether your system is working properly or everything's connected properly? It's gonna, I don't know if it's gonna tell you whether or not it's working, but it's gonna show you um, how things are gonna be connected when the circuit board goes to manufacturing. Awesome. So the CAD software's job is really to take that theoretical electrical schematic that you're drawing with your wires and everything and make sure that those connections are carried over into the physical circuit board. So the idea behind the board is to make something small that can take a single power input and then distribute it to, let's say four connectors on one side and four connectors on the other side. Beautiful, beautiful. So if we're gonna draw this power distribution board for our FT Spear, what's the first thing we're gonna do in a program now? So the first thing I would do is I open up schematic capture and I start uh, looking for the components that I'm gonna need in the component library. So uh, in this case, we're looking for a couple of um, two pin headers so that we can carry positive and ground yeah. um, from one side or you know, from one connection yeah. to the other. So Now in our, in our JST connector world, 2.5 millimeter I think is a really, really common millimeter spacing. Is that correct? It is, yeah. It's probably the most common through hole header mm -hmm. type. In this case, you know, it gives us good spacing for if you were to solder wires directly to the board for your LEDs. Um, or whatever you're trying to power. Super. It gives you nice spacing for that. So you're working on 2.5 millimeters here, and basically I want this for LEDs and, and different components to run left and right. Oftentimes when I do LED uh, strings, it's really hard to make those little jumpers and it just kind of bundles everything up. Right. So what you're doing for us in this design is basically giving me power going to one side and power going to the other side. Now I see with, with, with when you're doing your connectors, you have a whole library there's a good chance that the, the connector spacing or the connector you're looking for will most likely be in there, right? So the most generic components, like headers in this case, mm -hmm. are probably already in the library that comes with the CAD package. And what you're seeing on the screen is um, me going through the library that came with DipTrace free version. Very good. Um, so, so these connectors were there. Now, sometimes you're using a component or a part that is unusual or it's not very common. Um, and it, it doesn't end up in this library. So there's a couple things you can do. You can draw it yourself. Um, all CAD packages provide some way for you to create your own symbols and footprints for those okay. parts. The other thing is, is there's a lot of parts available online to download. A lot of times the manufacturer of the part, they want you to use their part so they make it easy and they provide you with that, that footprint. Oh, very good. That makes sense. Well, once you have that part here and you have kind of like the general schematic laid out, Next, I see that you're gonna be actually connecting your positives and negatives. Yep, so I'm using a tool called the wire tool, and uh, 
it, it does exactly what it says. It's drawing a wire. So um, the idea here is that on, on each of these connectors on this board, all of these, this particular pin is gonna be connected to the same signal. So they're all positive. And then I'm gonna go through and connect all the grounds. And I notice here every time that you kind of hover over your positive wire, it kind of lit up and the more that you connected, the more it lit up. Yeah, so it's, it's showing when I hover the mouse over, um, over a signal, it's showing where that signal connects to everywhere in the schematic. So that makes it really easy for you to see, you know, oh, okay, this signal carries over to that connector all the way on the other side of the schematic or whatever. Visual. Nice. And the same process before when you're doing your grounds, I see grounds is all just a common. Yeah, so in this case, um, I'm using a ground symbol. That's just to prevent me from having a whole bunch of wires that crisscross in the schematic. Um, the software's smart enough to know that all grounds are connected. And so anytime I use that symbol, uh, it knows that those signals should be connected to each other. Um, and you'll see if I, if I were to hover over the ground signal, you would see it, it highlight all of them. So at this point, is your schematic done? Yeah, so I'm finished with the schematic here. I'm just gonna save it. And then uh, the next step is to translate that over to a circuit board. Okay. So right now, all we've done is define it kind of in a theoretical sense. And so the, the next step is to really lay out what the physical board looks like. Um, and the CAD software helps us do that. So uh, I'll go to convert to PCB. I'm gonna define now my outline for the circuit board, which is the physical size of it. Okay. So I want it to be roughly um, an inch and a half wide and an inch tall. So that's about where I draw my lines here. And I just make a box um, with the draw tool to define that. And so now I have the circuit board defined and I'm just going to start laying out my components and placing them where on the board I want them to be. Uh, you can rotate them around, you can position them however you'd like. And, and in this case, what I want is I want to have four power connectors on the left of the side of the board and four power connectors on the right side. Okay. And then a place for the power to come in either on the top or the bottom. And for this program specifically, you just hit the R button and it rotates it. Yeah. Yeah. And it depends on which program you're using. I think some programs you right click and it rotates. Uh, but in, in dip trace, it's just hitting the R key. You just drag and drop it. Yeah, it's you do. And, and you can put stuff wherever you want it. Um, there's also grid settings so that you can have things snap to a certain position if okay. you're real specific about size or, um, you know, if you have mounting holes or something like that that you need to put in a, a certain spot, you can use the grid to Great. make things snap together. What are these light blue lines that are kind of like dancing around with all the different connectors? So those are called rat nest lines. Um, and what those do is that shows us that uh, that the CAD so software understands from the schematic that those those points on the circuit board are supposed to be electrically connected. Okay. And so um, once I'm done laying it out here, I'll, uh, I'll get to the point where I start to route it, which is actually drawing the copper traces in the circuit board. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and basically what that's saying, those rat nest lines, is it's saying this is where there should be copper to connect these things. So just before, like with the schematic and you hovered over and lit up all the lines, this is kind of doing the same through the rat nest lines. Yep, exactly. So I, I'm, I'm just going to start now and, and route because I've got my layout the way I like it. Um, I want to set a, a fairly thick trace size here so that uh, we can carry, you know, a decent yeah. amount of current. So for a classic LED light or something that would carry, um, what, would, what would, 10 amps, would that be too much or? Oh yeah, for, the, for this trace size, 10 amps would be far too much. Okay. Um, I would guess, you know, most LED strips are probably somewhere under an amp. Okay. Um, using small numbers of LEDs without having done the math. But yeah. you see as I'm clicking through here with the routing yeah. tool, those rat nest lines are going away as I fill. Um, basically the rat nest is there to tell me there's a connection that needs to be here that isn't. And so I'm making those connections with the routing tool. Okay. And as I do that, those rat nest lines are going away. And then I just switched over to the bottom of the board. Um, I'm finished routing one signal and I kept that signal alone on the same, on one side. So I'm switching to the other side so that we can do the, the ground signal. And this is nice because that's gonna make it much more difficult to short out the board, won't it? Yeah, it'll make it impossible. So, I mean, the idea is that um, the signals, you know, are totally separated. Yep. So when you're going from one layer to the other, where, whereabouts is that? Changing layers? Um, yeah. In this program, I can just hit one and two on the keyboard and it'll okay. jump from layer one to layer two. You can also select a layer in the top of the screen. Anytime you draw a copper line here on the circuit board, you know, you're, you're, you're carrying electricity from one signal to another or one place to another. So if you were to draw a line that crossed another signal, um, you know, the CAD software, it might yell at you for doing it, but it'll let you do it. And that may cause a short circuit in your board, which would mean that it was defective from design. Gotcha. So um, it's important to kind of be cautious that you're not crossing your signals. 
It's really cool that there's a free version of this too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now basically with the free version, it just gives you so many different functions or uh, abilities before you have to go over to the paid version. Is that correct? Yeah. I think the limitations for dip trace for the free version are, has something to do with the number of signals. Okay. So um, our board has two signals. Uh, <laughs> So, so we're okay. So, so we're okay. <laughs> but, but I, and I don't remember what the real limitation yeah. is. I think maybe it's 50 or 100 signals or something like that. So now with this board that you have drawn here, um, it's not done yet though, is it? Well, it's, it's not quite finished. So um, one of the things I like to do to make every board um, simple is to add some silk screen um, text to it. Okay. So when they make the board, um, they'll print on it uh, this whatever text we type, and that can we can use this as labels to label the pins, so that uh, when you're putting your airplane together, you can you can you know know which Easily connection to. Yep, real simple. So we just type in the text, set the size that we want. Uh, it's important to make sure you're on the right layer because the CAD program will let you type ground or the word ground in copper if you want to, and it'll end up on the board in copper. So. I did select that we want to use the silk screen layer on the top side of the board. It's called top silk. And that means that it's going to be printed in like white ink yeah. usually. And if you think about for clarity, especially if you're designing your own model or you're doing something, I mean, you can take this extra step just to not only make your, your uh, connections all clean and nice, but also just make it personal and repeatable. Do the jumpers, do the j it, j jumper numbers, do those automatically populate? They do. So that's called a reference designator. And the, okay. the CAD software will assign a reference designator to every component. Okay. Um, that's really important when you get into the point where you're starting to put lots of components on a circuit board. Um, and like say you bring a board to us at Tritium. Yeah. Um, we would take your uh, bill of materials and those reference designated numbers would tell our equipment where the parts get soldered on the board so that we wow. know. Um, you know which part goes where so they are automatically assigned by your CAD. So another thing here is I always like to give a board a version number. Um, this just helps me keep track of any changes I made to it in the future. Let's say I decide or let's say I make a mistake and I yeah. send this board off for manufacturing and it shows up and I find out that I've got a short circuit or something like that. Um, then I can fix it, change the version number to 1.1 and send it out again and then I'll know anytime I look at a 1.0 board it's no Love good. It. So I, I recommend always giving a version number. And we'll stick the flight test name on here just so we know. You know what I love about this? If I was going to solder all this together and make these connections, I would spend more time having to make this board than designing it and ordering it. Yeah, so the, the, the benefit of it is, one, it's really neat compared to having wires run yeah. everywhere, right? It's also a lot easier to assemble. The downside is, is you don't get to have it today, right? Yeah. <laughs> you, gotta, you, gotta, you can draw it and then wait a few days for it to show up in the mail. Yeah, what's your experience with ordering from JLC PCB with your boards? What's your experience of turnaround time generally? Um, it depends. They have different turnaround times that you can select. And okay. so if you need it in a bigger hurry, you can pay more for them to make it okay. overnight. Um, wow. Uh, it won't show up overnight, yeah. but they can make it in 24 hours and then ship it to you. Um, the, uh, I would say even the slowest, is I don't think we've ever waited more than two weeks on a circuit board. That's amazing. So, um, so now that I'm finished with the design, uh, I'm going to go in there and, and, and prepare the what's called the Gerber files. And those are the files that we will send away for manufacturing. Um, so if you just go up here to File and Export, um, Gerber. And one of the things that's important here, there's a lot of settings, but really all you need to know is we need the Gerber files and we need the NC drill files. Okay. Uh, those two things are, um, it's actually a whole bunch of files, but um, each file is essentially an image for that layer of the board. So they'll have a top file and they'll have a bottom file, which will show the copper layers. They'll have a top and bottom silk file that'll have the, the silk printing. And then the drills are to tell their CNC equipment where to drill all the holes for the solder points and okay. what size drills to use. So those are the two important things that uh, like JLC would need or, uh, to, to make the circuit boards. Very good. And the drill, drilling is really important because uh, that actually passes that can pass the current through the PCB board, right? It can, yeah. So our board, we don't actually take too much advantage of that, but you know, we have a top and a bottom layer and a lot of times, mostly all the time, you need to be able to carry your signal from the top to the bottom um, so you can get traces past each other or jump them around. So anytime you drill a hole, um, that's going to be plated and then that'll carry the signal through from the top wow. to the bottom. So that could be a really cool way if for some reason you wanted the bottom to have nothing on it whatsoever you could literally almost pop the signal down to the bottom and then back up again. Yeah, uh, you absolutely to, to can. To avoid kind of crossing over the tracers like the, you talked about. Exactly. Oh, very cool. 
I always wondered why there's so many holes in PCB boards that just didn't seem to have a tracer. Yeah, so so those are called, so there's there's any time a component's placed there yeah. and it's a through hole component, those are called through holes. But okay. if you just need a signal to jump from one side to the other side of the board, it's called a via. So it looks like at this point, the board is done. Uh, we got the Gerber files, we've drawn it, you got the schematics. Next thing we gotta do is order it, right? That's right, yep. So we're gonna order ours from JLC PCB. Um, I really like their website. They make it super easy to uh, place an order. Now this is one thing I love is because your company uses JLC PCB all the time. We do. Um, we are, it's actually probably our number one circuit board supplier. Um, JLC is quick. The boards are quality. They have the easiest ordering process of anybody. Um, yeah. And that's what we're going to be taking you guys through right now because making it's one thing, but actually getting it is another. And uh, this is a very visual site, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So. Um, you'll see if, if oh, I go uh, to the order section here, I already have an account, but uh, that's really easy. So you set up an account, I'll get my Gerber files and drag those in, uh, and it'll actually even show us a preview of the circuit board. So they're going to they're gonna draw it for us and say, here's what it looks like when we send it to you. And this is probably a really important moment because say you did accidentally draw something on the copper layer, you would you would see, like, where's my lettering? Yeah, so there are ways to preview that in, uh, in Diptrace that I could have shown, but um, this shows you kind of a representation of that. There's a whole bunch of settings. Yeah. You can pick your circuit board color, choose how many you want, um, different types of surface finishes, and then add it to the cart. You can see we're buying five boards for $2. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So even with the shipping uh, for this, which is what, $20? No, yeah. shipping $17.60. So the total price is still under 20 bucks. For five boards, so four bucks a board. Yeah. Yep, that, that's one. custom that you designed yourself in uh, 15 minutes. Yeah, and one thing that's nice is let's say you design five different boards. Yeah, you can combine that shipping and and you know order your order oh, five excellent. different designs. All right, friends. So this is really cool. Uh, Tanner, thank you so much for walking us through this process. Our next video here is we're going to be receiving this uh, board from JLC PCB. We're going to be installing it into our spear and then putting some LED lights on it. So make sure you do us a big favor, hit the subscribe bell. And then Tanner, we're going to be working with you uh, through this whole process. We're going to be identifying different projects here. And Tanner's going to kind of go from uh, guiding us through the concept of designing to the ordering. Ultimately, we're going to go to your, uh, your business and then watch how these are assembled. And along the way, we want you to build that knowledge so you'll be able to do it yourself. And if you guys need a good service like Tanner's uh, with Tritium, uh, we'll definitely have information down linked below. So friends, this is basically a very simple project that you guys can do very easily in very little time and also get your feet wet with learning how to work with these different softwares and make this power distribution board. Uh, this is not done yet. We're going to get the circuit board, we're going to put it in our sphere, and after that, we're going to identify the next project with Tanner, and he's going to walk us through that as well. So we're pretty much done with this project here. Make sure you hit the subscribe bell. Check out the information linked down below for both JLC PCB and also Tanner's company, Tritium Studios, uh, where eventually we're gonna show you how the boards are assembled, right? Yeah, yeah, we'd love to have you guys over and, and let you see the whole assembly line. Awesome. Do us a big favor and leave in the comments below what, what kind of project you'd like to see uh, with, uh, with circuit board design and also for your future model airplane designs. And we'll do our best to, uh, to make that a reality. Thanks for being part of the family and we'll see you next time.